Hello and happy Thursday. Welcome to the Purse Strings Lunch and Learn. My name is Maggie and I'm a partner here at Purse Strings where we're all about providing free financial tips, tricks, pieces of advice to get those wheels turning. And then when you are ready to go put, um, you know, get a will, get a trust, start investing, pay down debt, have a coach, um, all these good things, any financial transition or transaction, we have our top tier financial professionals willing, ready, and able to serve you. We call those our purse strings approved professionals, and Ashley Bales is one of them. So we're so excited to have her on today to talk about uh, this year I'm going to get out of debt. I know that's a big goal for so many. So we're excited to jump into this conversation. Um, but before all of that fun, Ashley, could you give us a little intro of who you are and what you do? Yeah. So, um, hey, everybody. I'm excited to be on the broadcast today. And thank you, Maggie, for having me on. Um, I work out of, um, it was Hammock Advisory Group. But actually, now we have rebranded to Hammock and Bales Financial Group. So that's exciting. So, I know, so, um, so I probably need to get that updated with you guys. But yeah, um, I do a lot of individual investment management, um, pretty much any kind of wealth management across the board, and then working specifically a lot with um, simple IRAs and 401k plans for small businesses, too. So, and excited. Awesome. To well, thank you again for coming on. We're excited to have you. And um, anyone tuning in, we're happy to answer any questions throughout the broadcast. Um, and if you're watching the replay, put them in the chat. And we're still happy to get back to those and answer them for you. But today, like I said, we're going to talk about this year, I'm going to get out of debt. Um, and I was looking over the notes. And I, I just wanted to start with this one line that I saw. Um, and it said, get mad to get motivated, which really stuck out to me. So like, let's just dive in from there. Yeah. So I think in my own personal life, um, most of the time when I've been able to like really push forward on something, especially um, like paying down debt, I've had to get like really angry at it. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's just something that clicks inside where you're just like sick and tired of being sick and tired um, and you're like ready to make that change. So um, I'm sure a lot of you, you know, if you're tuning on today or you're, you're watching this on the replay, um, you know, you're watching it for a reason. Maybe it's your, you know, up late at night, worried about, you know, how you're going to pay the next bill. Um, and so, yeah, get mad to get motivated. So um, debt payoff is really all about behavior change, in my opinion. And you can relate it a lot to, you know, getting fit. So there's a lot of people this year, their New Year's resolution, New Year's resolution is to, to get healthy. Um, and that is a behavior change. And that's long term consistency. You don't go to the gym once and lose 20 pounds. And, you know, you're not going to look at your budget once or your bank account once and, you know, lose 50,000 in debt. It's, it's just not going to yeah. happen. So um, I think it's something where you have to really, you know, make a plan like fitness wise. You go to the gym, um, you know, you prep your meals ahead of time and it may take you six months to lose 20 pounds. And I think when right. it comes to your finances, consistency is key, just like it is with fitness. Um, you really want to know your numbers. You want to review your bank accounts um, every single month, be reviewing your credit report and really watching those monthly, those monthly bills and stuff. So um, yeah, if you are you know kind of sick and tired, like I said, of being sick and tired and you're, and you're ready to get motivated, um, hopefully today's session will kind of get you going in that direction. I love that. And I, I mean, I get it as someone who's like paid off their debt. It's just hard to, I mean, some days you're just like, I'm sick and tired of this credit card debt. So we are, we, we're going to do something. Otherwise I know it's going to be here forever. So like, let's get motivated and get going. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, how bad do you really want it? Um, just like losing your weight, you know, how bad do you want to be fit and to live that lifestyle? Cause you know, it's, you're gonna have to put in some work. Right. Right. Yeah. And so a lot of times I will, you know, ask folks that I'm working with, like, you know, ask yourself the question, you know, how did I accumulate this debt to begin with? Um, and a lot of there's a lot of pieces, reasons that people will accumulate debt. And then, you know, why do I want to get rid of it? So like knowing your why is like really, really important. So, you know, maybe um, you want to leave a legacy of wealth for your children and not a legacy of debt. Or, um, you know, you have some travel plans in your future and you're wanting to, you know, be able to go do some things that you wanted to do and never been able to do. Or maybe you're wanting to upgrade vehicles. Um, so really understanding like your why um, will kind of help you get motivated as well. Um, and then also asking yourself, like, what would I be able to do if I if I didn't have this debt? So your debt is really um, just tying up your future income. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, that future income is what's going to help you move forward, start your investing, you know, really do what you want to do. So um, I think it's really important to just say, you know, why do I have this? Um, Why do I want to be rid of it? And what could I do or how could my life look if I did not have it? And I think those are all great questions because the why is kind of figuring out, you know, how you got to this point so you don't get to this point again. And sometimes life happens and things happen and that's just how we got there. Um, But then, you know, what would you do if you didn't have this debt? Sometimes being just, oh, I want to be debt free. That's not motivating enough. I mean, nobody knows if you're debt free or not. That doesn't get you there. But knowing then you can take a relaxing vacation and not worry about your debt. Now that's the motivation. Sure. Um, to get you there. And then, yeah, how would it improve your life? Um, Because again, just being debt free isn't that great, but maybe it increases your credit score and then you can buy a house and that's your life improvement. So it's a stair stepper, I always think. Um, But sometimes just being debt free and that label is not enough. It's kind of, okay, so what's after that? 100%. Yeah. So, so there are some, some things, you know, if you're dealing with a debt situation, there are definitely some steps that I would suggest taking um and number one is like review where you're at now so if you're planning to go on a diet plan or you know do a lifestyle change back to the fitness thing you're going to take your measurements you're going to do before pictures so that you can do your after pictures later you may weigh yourself to see you know how much do i weigh today versus how much do i want to weigh in six months your finances are exactly the same you have to sit down and say I'm going to review my credit report. Um, What debts do I actually have? What have I been laid on? Review those bank statements. Like no one ever wants to look at their bank (laughs) statements. And I'm like, this is where the money is. Like, this is where the money's coming. This is where the money's going. You have to have an average of how much you spend on groceries every month. You have to look at what you're spending on subscription services, like the Netflix, the Hulu. Um, And so similar to the fitness, like understand where you're at now. That would be like, step number one. And then to me, step number two would be, you know, what is a reasonable goal? And by reasonable, I mean like achievable within the next, you know, six to 12 months down the road and really give yourself some grace with that because things are going to come up. Um, So you might have an emergency or something that sets you back a little bit, but um, you know, you may not be able to pay off twenty thousand dollars in six months. So really sit down to try to figure out what's reasonable for you based off of your income and maybe some reduction in your expenses, just kind of by looking at your budget a little bit closer. Um, The third thing I would say is really focus on like freeing up your income. Um, So like I mentioned, you know, going through those bank statements, seeing like where the extraneous spending is, um, maybe considering like reducing your retirement contributions just for the short term to kind of free up some of that income. Because if debt reduction is your number one goal, Um, You can always go back to adding to those retirement plans and everything later on, just so that you can have that freedom, you know, six months from now or 12 months from now. Right. And, you know, the fourth thing would be pay down as much as you can um, by um, reducing those expenses or, you know, increasing your income a little bit. And so one of the things, Maggie, I'd put in my notes is, you know, really review your income too. Not only but your income and say, you know, this income may be comfortable for me um, without debt, but is it comfortable for me with this debt? And if it's right. not, what are some options? Can you do one of those, you know, at home Amazon gigs? Um, do you have a friend or a family member who, you know, works somewhere locally that may be able to get you part time on the weekends um, just to kind of, you know, increase that income option a little bit? And we got to remember those things are, you know, they're part time. They're getting us from point A to point B to hit a goal. It's not, I think a lot of, um, and we talk about this sometimes, sometimes getting some of those different jobs, people feel a lot of shame either, you know, I got all this education and I shouldn't have to do this or I did that or this, you know, so um, there's some shame around that, but it's like, no, it's getting us from point A to point B. We're getting debt free. And I know I'm doing this from this point on, Um, you know, I picked up one of those gigs and it's, is it my favorite thing in the world? Absolutely not. But like gets me out work is not, you know, from my nine to five. So it has some opportunity and it just really helps you grow and you see that growth happen. Um, and so, you know, like, okay, this is just to pay off my debt and I'm going to be done, um, which is really helpful. 100%. Yeah. It's just, you know, we've got to have that short-term mindset. You, you know, you're in that step number two, like what is reasonable for me within the next six to 12 months and saying like, how can I get there? if I can't reduce enough of the expenses out of my budget, because you still have to have some life conveniences within your budget, 
Right. Um, then the only other option is to find ways to increase the income on the opposite side. And sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit in order to do that in the short term. But all you're doing is is freeing up that income and making your longer term life easier and better for you. Right. Definitely. It's for those long term gains. Yes. Um, and so then sometimes we hear that a good idea is kind of consolidation um, to a different card. Can you kind of explain why we would do that and what that process might look like? Yeah. So um, I don't know, you know, how many of you have, you know, reviewed the interest on like credit cards or anything lately, but it's not low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, generally not low. Um, so there are some options available out there. And so like my two like main recommendations, I guess, would be um, if you're in that situation, you may look to see if you qualify for like a zero interest card in the next, you know, 12 months, um, which will help uh, help you with that interest in the short term and give you an opportunity to kind of get ahead on that debt. Um, it probably depends on your credit score, um, whether or not you might qualify for a card like that, but definitely worth looking into. And then also, um, you know, you could contact like your local financial institution about maybe like a small personal loan to consolidate some of that higher interest debt into like one loan where you know what the exact monthly payment's going to be. Um, and you know, six or 7% interest is better than 26% interest. So right. um, that's definitely an option. I would be wary of, you know, um, you know, just picking any debt consolidation company. So I would talk to a financial professional, maybe like uh, set an appointment with a financial coach or a financial professional and really have a conversation about um, what kind of debts are they? How long do you expect it to take, you know, to take to pay off? Um, are there just some that you just cannot get caught up on? And if there are things that you just cannot make headway on, that might be a good option for you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Sometimes that 0% really helps just so you, all your money is going to the principal and not to the interest for that time. Um, but you do want to be wary out there. Um, and most of the times we say, if it sounds too good to be true, it, is. it probably is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, and, you know, for me, I'm a financial professional. I do this every day in my life. Um, I'm like my family's budget nerd, you know, so everybody who has like money questions in my family, they're like, Ashley, what about this? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so I've done a lot of budgets with folks and there are a lot of tools out there um, to kind of help you get your money straight. There's apps, there's all kinds of things. But to me, the thing that has always worked and has never failed me is just putting pen to paper, writing down exactly the money that I expect to come in every month, the money that I expect to go out, all of my debts and the debt totals, and just like really getting that down on paper and having that conversation with myself. But also, you know, if you have a partner, um, I think it's important to, you know, communicate as a whole, as a family, um, and, you know, try to get on board with each other about your future goals and about why this debt is causing you the stress that it is. Mm -hmm. And it's very important for both partners to be aligned in those goals. And so we always say, um, you know, have money conversations at least monthly with your partner, if not, you know, more often, just so you guys have the same goals, because you probably, you know, both want to go on that vacation and both enjoy it together. And so, you know, if we work together and save some money and pay off this debt, that can really help get us there um, together. And we just want to make sure we're really aligned in those goals. Um, because if you have two people just going different ways with the money, it's not going to really work out very well for you either person. Yes. Yes. And, and um, one other thing, Maggie is, you know, I would also ask myself, like, what are the debts that I have that like really cause me pain? Like, mm -hmm. you know, what am I laying up at night thinking about before bed every night? Um, or what debts are causing conflicts between me and my partner or my family members? And, um, and I would focus in on those debts. There's a lot of different theories out there about what to pay off first. Right. Um, to me, what gives you um, ease, you know, with your mental health? That's, yeah. that's where I would start. That's priceless. Um, yeah, so like, you know, if it's a high interest credit card that's causing you stress, um, I would start there. If it's a title loan, start there. If it's, um, you know, a loan with particularly high payments, like maybe the interest rate's not very high, but it takes up the most of your income every month, mm -hmm. focus on that one. Um, so I would pick your pain point on that debt repayment and say, you know, this one or this two are really causing me the most pain. Um, I'm going to focus on getting those paid off or paid down 
first. And that might be through a reduction in your spending. That might be through a little bit of an increase in your income, reducing your retirement contribution. So there's a lot of ways to kind of go about it. Um, but if you're not sure, like first steps, like I said, a financial professional or a financial coach who will really sit down with you, review all the paperwork with you and go through everything is going to be like super helpful. Definitely. Yeah. And I like that a tip because we do hear all these different methods of where to start. Right. And it is, you know, what keeps you up at night? What's causing you the biggest worry? Because you're going to keep worrying about that if you, if you don't address it. Right. Um, so you need to address, you know, that problem that is keeping you up. And then we can start working towards these other things. And, you know, once you pay down one, you'll start snowballing up more money to start paying down the neck. So it will get easier. We promise. Yes. Um, and that's a but, great. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I had actually written this down. It's not on like my original notes that I sent over to you, but like, you know, momentum is super important. Yeah. So, and just for instance, like in my own, my own life, um, you know, I started off early with some debt, um, like right out of high school. And I learned a hard lesson by that. Um, but I had like bought a brand new car. I had just got my first full-time job. I bought a brand new car and I was <laughs> like, Oh, this is exciting. I had a brand new car. <laughs> and then it, and then my monthly income got tight and it was stressing me. So yeah. I had to sell the car and pay the bank back like 2000 bucks just to get rid of it. And that didn't yeah. even, you know, and, and so um, then I bought like a Chevy Cavalier for like $3,000. And as soon as that was paid off, I started paying myself the payment. So then I had the Chevy Cavalier and then I started paying myself 300 a month. And by the time I had ran the wheels off of the Cavalier, then I bought a $6,000 pickup truck. And I did the same exact thing. I paid cash for it. I started paying myself still that $300 a month. And then the next car I purchased was like, you know, $15,000 and I paid cash for it. And I just kind of continued to do the same thing. And then I was just telling you, you know, yesterday I went and yeah. bought um, a 2015 Lincoln Navigator. So it's not brand new, right? Um, but it's what suits my family right now. And I paid, you know, 23,000 for it cash. And I think it just, it's momentum building that has taken me since I was 18. You yeah. know, I started with a Chevy Cavalier and now I'm at a Lincoln Navigator, but it takes time to, you know, build that momentum, to build those savings. And you have to give yourself grace and say, hey, I'm going to have to drive this two door Cavalier for a little bit until I can afford my Navigator. And I love your story of, you know, we do get a little excited at times, especially in the beginning. And, and that's how we get ahead of ourselves. You know, that's maybe how we fell into some debt or things like that. But then you had come to the moment where, OK, we got to sell it off. It's not the best decision. You didn't sit on it forever or like, you know, shame yourself forever around it. You paid it off. You moved on. You did what you needed to do. And you really learned from that experience as well. Um, I mean, we all have to fall down and get some scrapes to figure out how to get back at it. Um, which is just an honest, I mean, we're human, it's life, you know, so there's no shame around it, but we do need to just learn and then get back up and keep going. 100% for sure. Yes. Awesome. And so I really think, you know, one of the biggest takeaways here is the fact that um, it's not always about making sure it's the app or the, or the method to paying down debt, but it's about staying consistent, just like yes. you would in a fitness regime or something like that. Yes, 100%. I think the key here to being successful is knowing where you're at now. So know your numbers, get, you know, today, wherever you're at, you know, maybe not at work, printing off all your computer paper, <laughs> you know, wherever you're at, um, you know, print off your bank statements, pull up your credit report, annualcreditreport.com, pull those up, um, you know, get those free reports, really take a look at all of your debt. What are your payments? Um, you know, set yourself a reasonable goal. You probably are not going to be able to pay all of it off in in 2023, you may not be able to. Um, so, you know, what's reasonable for you? Are there one or two that are really causing you a pain point to go after? Um, focus on freeing up that income a little bit or increasing that income a little bit and then just go after it. So, um, yeah, it can be it's a process, just like you mentioned, like I mentioned before, like the fitness thing. It's not going to happen overnight. There's no super quick fix. It's, you know, you got to be committed and it has to be like a behavior change. Definitely. Definitely. Um, well, I feel like this has been a ton of great information. If anyone else uh, tuning in has any questions, please put them in the chat. We're happy to answer them. Um, and then Ashley, if someone was interested in working with you, kind of what can you help them with and what does that process look like? Yeah. So um, particularly if you have or own like a small business and you're, you know, interested in maybe starting a retirement plan, there's a lot of great um, startup credits 
uh, tax credits for businesses right now who want to start a retirement plan. So that's really my main focus for 2023. Um, but if you are someone who has questions about, um, you know, just your current financial situation debt, um, you know, working on your credit, because um, I think that that's kind of a, a big stick uh, sticking point for some folks too, I'd be happy to help you with that. Um, and then across the board, we do, you know, investments, wealth management, those kinds of things too. So um, yeah, you can definitely get in touch with me. Um, my email is going across the uh, across the bottom on the board there. Um, it's Ashley at hammockadvisorygroup.com. And um, I'm also on, on LinkedIn. And I have a Facebook page called um, Candid Money with Ashley Beals too. So you can find me there. I like to share little tidbits as I find them um, and newsworthy events as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been a wealth of knowledge. So we appreciate you coming on today and um, sharing your expertise. Um, like Ashley said, her email has been going through the bottom. She's also one of our Purse Strings Approved Professionals. So you can check her out on our site, PurseStrings.co. And um, don't be afraid to give her a call or any of the professionals a call. Really make this 2023 your year. Make this your year of getting out of debt or at least, you know, getting a good start on it because um, it does take time. It takes consistency, but we are there to support you along the way. So um, anything else before we sign off? No, I don't think so. I think um, just kind of going back through the four steps, like real quick, where are you? What's a reasonable debt payoff for the next six to 12 months? Working on free up that income and then pay that debt off. Um, and like I said, any questions at all, feel free to get in touch with me. I appreciate you guys for having me on today. Awesome. Well, this has been great. We'll be back again here next week and we'll talk to everyone soon. So goodbye. Thank you.